So get into this archway over here. Yes, sir. What are we What are we looking at? We don't need to support the fruit. I've seen a couple where they they try to do a little, uh, almost a, a hosiery net for it, so that we're not uh, putting too much stress on the fruit and they fall off. You're talking for melons. Yes. True. I know we got we got uh, pukes here, but if we were to run, uh, he said you had a, uh, a melon archway last year. I didn't grow anything in it last year. Or I probably put it up four years ago. And the first year it did fairly well. Um, the problem with where we had it was the roots from the maple tree went in and just sucked the life out of the soil. So, plus it wasn't, uh, you know, a lot of sun in that area. It would get shade, you know, like right now it's shade where that melon tunnel was. And, um, but we did grow melons and we did all right. And if I didn't, like you say, <clears throat> hang the melon in a, uh, a mesh bag, the melons, as you know, when they get ripe, the stem automatically separates. It start, they just come off. You go pick your cantaloupes and they're not even connected to the vine anymore and they're ripe, they're ready to go. Well, that would happen with the melons and I'd come home um, from work and uh, my melon would be laying on the ground split open. So yeah, you, you might have to have something to catch them if they're the kind that release. And hanging like this, the production on the, the cukes, there's no issue with the production. You get, you get pretty good, I, I'm seeing you get good sized cukes off of there. Yeah, yep, no, no issue with that. You have to, you know, manually kind of put them up there. So you can see that uh, this here needs to be tied up here. And I could just, I could put that up, show you how I do that. And you can, you know, I mean, we've grown cucumbers on the ground, but uh, they're just harder to spot the ripe ones. And if you're limited in space, you can grow things vertically. And that seems to help out. So we can do that. And that gets that up there. Grab another one of these. Just loop it around to itself, loop it through itself, and wrap it around here. And again, the reason why I do it like this is because it makes it easier to get it off next season. Or, you know, this fall when, when we get frost and all that. And you can let you cu cucumbers grow a little bit before you hang them up if you want to. It doesn't hurt them too much. It's just, it's more tedious when you finally get to trellising them. Since there's a lot more to deal with. But I suppose in the long run, it kind of saves time because you're not trellising shoots that are this long. You know, you, you can trellis something that's that long so you don't have to tie as often. So how is this going to withstand being shaded if we get the cucumber shading it? Well, the way that this trellis is set up and it's not 50 foot long, all the sunlight is going to go in here that's needed to be going in here, that it could get. It's not really gonna shade anything except say a little morning, a little afternoon. Last year we grew cucumbers on both sides, but uh, essentially these cucumbers from one side will go all the way to the ground. That's how far they will grow in one season. So like on our trellises out back, 
I get them to the top and then they go back to the ground. So we're talking, you know, 10 foot of growth easily, 12, 15. The, the T posts are 10 foot T posts. They go, you know, they're about eight foot out of the ground. So we, we could say 16 if we wanted to. And uh, yeah, it's, I mean, you can grow cucumbers on both sides. It's just how you set it up. So these, <clears throat> this, this um, technique seems to be about the best use of time and materials for cattle panels because your center is completely opened and um, there's still enough support here because what happens is if you get a whole bunch of cucumbers on one of these um, it wants to squat and because these t posts come up you know around four foot high or whatever it is there they they support that little bit of squat and you're not going to get that much weight up here so um, and then also i find that with your trellis system don't put it on the ground keep it up because it's just like it's like raised garden beds we started out with raised garden beds and um there's nowhere to go so we like to mulch and you like to weed underneath them and plus not only the fact that uh, now you have some more space to plant your plants and work here now you've got a trellis that's actually um, 10 inches taller than it would have been if you'd put it on the ground so conceivably you can start your trellises a good foot foot and a half off of the ground and if you need uh, your cucumbers to get up there you can tie them up to get them up to the trellis to start with so it's yeah and uh, and I've learned that over the years that that always put more space under that uh, fence trellis whatever than you think you need it just for me one of the routes that I'm going is being able to repurpose things that we can we can either pick up from let's say a neighbor's not using or find them in a yard sale anything like that and around where we're at we're we're looking at a lot of people having leftover hog panels leftover t-posts you know anything like that and so what you've essentially done is taken something that would just be lying around and now you've created this beautiful little archway that you're feeding off of it's you got you got a nice little salad right under it what made you uh what made you kind of want to go the the route of the hog panel for the archway well um i was looking at gardening on the internet and i found uh a photo of these melons hanging in this archway and it looks pretty neat with all the melons hanging down and so that kind of got me started on the idea and um, the first rendition of it was the melon tunnel and I didn't put any t-posts in the ground I just used the the cattle panels and I found once I get enough weight on there there wasn't enough support and so as we progress with things I think in life we don't have any failures when we do have a failure if we want to call it that it's okay um, maybe I should do that different and let's learn from this versus oh that was you know scrap it no we we actually learned something so we learned that uh, raising it up and and I put a that grape trellis over there years ago before I really do much we're still up off the ground but we only have about that much space i wish that i had put it you know two feet off of the ground something like that so it just makes it a lot easier when you want to mulch and weed and and um, put compost and you're not to you know and, and it's good to keep these out of the soil because they'll rust so when it has all that moisture on it all the time it is not so good for the cattle panel either now if you're planning on uh, not moving this trellis for years to come what i use is um, electric fencing wire not the high tensile stuff but the the smaller gauge stuff that you can actually kind of bend with your fingers and that doesn't rust as long as it's as it's above the ground it's galvanized seems to be fairly sturdy but uh, in an effort to save time with my new trellises that I don't plan on leaving up just like 
like some of the other fences that I've done recently, I've used zip ties. And a zip tie, a black one, is going to probably last three to five years, something like that. And they save a lot of time for installation and for disassem disassembly. So like to take the melon tunnel down, I had everything, all the panels all wired together. And that took me like probably 10 to 12 hours worth of work to get it apart. And, uh, you know, you're not saving the wire anyway because you really can't. So you're not really, you know, doing that much of a favor besides the fact that when I originally built the tunnel, I thought, man, ah, we're going to have this forever. Well, in a garden, I don't think we have anything forever. Everything changes. You know, we find that a tree is not working for us. If it's just taking up space, we plant something that we're going to utilize. We change it up. If this trellis is not working or, or you know, maybe, maybe we've over cucumbered this area. Maybe we don't plant anything cucumbers here for a few years and plant some beans and whatever else to richen that soil back up. So then we can come back to it. So start off with zip ties for a couple of years, and if you still like it, then go ahead and get the... Yeah, or you can just add a few more zip ties, you know. These uh, little U's here, are those the wires that you're talking about? No, so, well, this is the same material. This is the same um, electric fence wire. It's, it's, you know, it's fairly flexible. Uh, no, no, sorry. These are made out of high tensile wire. This is your high tensile fencing wire. You can't bend these very easily. You're not going to be able to twist these. Would you use those for them? So originally when we set up here, we used drip lines, drip tape. And so it was to keep the drip lines and the drip tape uh, where you wanted it and not to blow around. The reason why we don't use those anymore is because we found if we want to plant seeds, the only seeds that come up are right at the emitter. And so if you want to plant a row of lettuce, it's like, forget about it. And it almost seemed like it was a waste of water because your water goes into the soil like this. And your roots, a lot of times, go like this. And your lettuces and whatever, you pull them up, it might go down this far, but it's not going to go down here. So you're like putting all this water into the soil and you're not, your plants really aren't benefiting from it that much. Well, that's all I have for this video. Bang around that bell icon if you want to be notified when new videos come out. Call us on the hotline if you have comments or questions and want to be featured in an upcoming video. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe. Check us out on the website and we'll see you guys on the next one.